what is up you guys and of course welcome back to an episode of who was really better this week we're gonna cover i was gonna say the dogs but that's not really a thing it's a dog and it's a pony the four legged animals and mammals even and yeah they're really cool they both are the special setup sweeper of uh, their typing and what i'm trying to say with that is that they're both represent setup sweeping and very really really offensive threats in general Keldio of course introduced in generation 5 has always been a primal threat because of its stab combination Sukyun been a really stolid Pokemon from first generation in 2 and then in generation 3 once it got access to Call of Mind became probably the bulkiest water type there is and has really have kept that stature it's really a rare thing to see a Pokemon basically utilizing the same time of set for generations to go and it's still being very effective and Kelio is much the same since it actually haven't necessarily built upon what it learned from the first generation it was introduced. So with that said, we're gonna go over, of course, as always, their overarching theme, Moopool, and what they really can do to find out which one of these two that really are better. And we're gonna start off with the Pokemon introduced first, being Sukune. Now, what really stands out with Sukune is that, well, it's a soul water type, but it's actually it's probably the only typing where it's very very much appreciated to BG Stamp because a very good defensive time because very few things to watch out for and the things you need to watch out for are very easy to predict to see when they come in. So resistance in water is of course as they'll always fire eyes, steel and water and only have weakness to the lights of electric and grass. So yeah, easy to see. Like you see a little type coming in, you see a grass type coming in, you see which Pokemon that come in offensively to do such things and just overall Sukjun is able to kind of deal with them properly. Stat-wise, Sukjun is one of those Pokemon that you really just can't want it kill. You just look at the stat, you realize exactly what I mean by that. And yeah, I mean, look at it. We have now 100 HP, which is very fair. We have 115 in both defenses. So yeah, this is a Pokemon that's not necessarily going down. Um, <laughs> really wide such an effective bulky Pokemon uh, attack 75 yeah it's not worthwhile special attack at 90 is a little bit below average but at, at the same time yeah it's bulky enough to at least retaliate probably one more than once and then this beats of 85 which is really high if we ever talk about Grizzelia ones I re also said in the same video that being very bulky and speedy is quite a rare trait and the combination is actually quite ferocious because it means that you can actually pressure your opponents really well because you are able to possibly outspeed them and just as Sukin really can be defensively very shakeable easily and just overall I like Sukin for that very reason. When it comes to abilities we have two which are learned by though it should be noted that it changed generation 7 uh, it went from water absorb to inner focus. Inner focus is not worth using for the life of me pressure however is and that's one of the very good merits of Sukun I said before. Being bulky and being able to PB stall is it's quite nasty. Uh, pressure of course enforces that you use double the PP for each move you reuse. So for example a fire blast that has most of PP of eight are now by default four. So yeah, it really is a pressure for anything. It's it's tremendously good, however, and it really really are complemented Sukun. And I mean, we're talking about two Pokemon here that are in the highest tiers, and it's because they really are with very few flaws. With flaws in mind, we're actually going to talk about what Sukun has in flaw, which is actually its move pool. Surprisingly, Sukun has, I wouldn't say a bad move pool, but it isn't as, I would say, wide as, let's say, a Manaphy, for example. There really are a few things holding this Pokemon back, one of them being actually we don't have a proper way of recovery. Being bulky without recovery means that you're going to access yourself to possible sea moves or leftovers. And that's not only a stellar thing. That said though, we are still going to cover what it learns because it's still got good things going here. First and foremost, when it comes to level up moves, I can just mention that like share cold, for example, shouldn't be worthwhile. But the things that first come here is Mist, Mirror Coat. Uh, Mist, of course, is a way to actually see Mirror Coat and get yourself will recover the mirror code is good for the course of moves that you use special effect towards you um you can retaliate with that so if anybody is going to try to volt switch on you you can mirror code that and that's well, that's a thing and um, besides that we have tailwind which is always good for teammates of your defensive pokemon even complements that even further extra sensory hydro pump call mind 
Uh, Call Mind should definitely be stated here. It's one of those things that just works. Call Mind is the bread and butter of the Sukun of anything. And while Kelly will be pretty much the same type of dialogue, Sukun definitely defined it, if anything. And just overall, it's a very, very good thing to have. We also have Roar, which means you can face Pokemon with Ice Beam, which is as it's necessarily for any type of uh, um, <clears throat> any type of Pokemon or Pokemon will be able to do a with an Ice Beam is good for um, it's a decent coverage for against Grass. That's what I'm trying to say. We also have Shadow Ball, which is quite all right, uh, and then Scald. This Pokemon will probably define Scald and of course. And the likes of Call Mine and Skull pressuring means that you never really had to use Toxic. The Burn Nerf, while damaging that strategy, is still a very viable at that. It's just a very a slower process than it was before. Um, other moves, Psych Up can also be used as possible to um, uh, get yourself to see Psych Up and then recover with yourself. Uh, though this Pokemon, of course, uses Rest Sleep Talk quite often, so it's just a niche at best. When it comes to the move tutors, here's where things kind of falls flat on it because there really aren't that many moves that are, I would say, accessible or necessary with it. We have Single Beam, Iron Head, Ice of Wind, Iron Tail, Snow, Tailwind again, Water Pulse, and Laser Focus. None of these moves are necessarily worthwhile. Single Beam is a fair filler, I would say, but never a better filler than for likes of Ice Beam to be able to deal with grass types in the first place. So, mm, Ice of Wind, however, could be useful, but it isn't what I would say a good move to use overall. But then we have the transfer moves. And the thing is here, it really wasn't anything where move natural gift, uh, avalanche, and dual, uh, ominous wind, whirlpool, which could be potentially blocking. But it got something for generation two of with of course the re-release of Golden Sun and that was curse. All of a sudden we have two combinations of Zucune. We have one Zucune that can set up calm mines and we have one that can curse up. And uh, Hell, you can go for both just to stall to get with the likes of rest of sleep talk, and that will be tremendously awful to be forced to be dealing with. But quite frankly, curse is an aspect. Curse kind of ensure you that you're forcing your opponent to play for special base damage, and where's that? Yeah, mirror coat. So it actually works. Um, also, decent film with that is waterfall, but quite frankly, anything will do from there. Um, but overall, what makes Sukun really, really interesting is that. It has decent stab combination already. Um, first come to mind is it has called Hydro Pump and yeah, Ice Beam. That's pretty much all you need for a water type, and then it's able to sustain itself with likes of Calm Mind, for example, and Rest. And you can even go with Assault Vest, you can go as a Phaser variant with the likes of Toxic. Um, it's just a thing with here. Um, it really is a stall your Pokemon with good offensive matchups. Um, that's about it. So you can do this really well. It really don't need to have anything else. I guess if the reason Sukun isn't higher in the tiers, so you, it's still UU even though it is viable, no you, and that is the lack of recovery is an aspect. It's heavily dependent on leftovers or having a teammate with wish patching or just rest in general and rest of course a double-edged sword depending on the matchup. And of course with the electric terrain now a thing, Sukun's strategizing with the likes of rest can always well be kind of backfired. However, the Assault Fest variant is still extremely effective in OU. I've even seen one with Hidden Power Fired where we'll deal with Ferrothorn. It does well. It's one of those Pokemon that doesn't necessarily die, so that's the reason it is as effective as it is. Usually carry Skull or Hydro Pound together with Ice Beam, Hidden Power Fire, and then Mirror Coat. Uh, but just overall, the reason it is, Sujin is good is because it's definitely one of the best setup sweep reward types in the game. Even more than that, one of the best special ones at that. While this is as offensively capable as like Helio is, it is more than defensively able to pull off the same type of variation as Kelly are doing. It is whether or not Kelly does it better, and well, let's see if it actually can. So Kelly is actually quite the interesting Pokemon, and it's mainly because of its stab combination. Born of Fighting, there is one other that has that combination, which one introduced the universe one, that was Polarath. It's significantly worse than Kelio. Kelio actually did all of the things of this type of combination needed to do to be treated right. So, what is the perk of a bee in a water fire type? Well, defensively not that much, but offensively a lot more capable. But overall though, we well, resistance to the likes of Bug Dog, Fire, Ice, Rock, Steel and Water. So, we got a new resistances in actually resisting Rock, Bug and Dark, which is quite fair. 
However, we also get a lot of weaknesses, and like I said before, Finance type aren't a type that would say defensively are working that well. I don't believe water complemented that well either, because we do keep our electric and grass issues, and we also get three more weaknesses, which are fairy, flying, and psychic. So a lot more things to watch out for, but we also have more key resistances, so it's not all bad, but it stands out that you know we have a few things to watch out for. That means that you can be forced out a lot more often. Uh, stat wise, Kelly stands out. First and foremost, it is almost as bulky as Sukim. We have 91 here, and then we have dual 90 instead of 115 in its defenses. That's quite high anyway. And then we have 72 in its attack, so it's weaker than Sukim, but we have a special attack at 129, which is significantly higher. Uh, a lot more actually. It's on the level of after one coal mine on Suku, and that's mm, that's power. It's directly powered and a speed of 108. Yeah, Kelly was quite NASCAR here. Should be stated that yeah, it doesn't beat the 110 Pokemon such as the Lady Twins, uh, but it still has a very high speed here at best here, and it only has one ability in Justified, which unfortunately isn't complementing it. Uh, because we are, it boosts yourself, if you get hit by Dark Move, you boost yourself at one attack. Um, so it's quite unfortunate considering that your attack is so low. So, yeah, that said, it actually quite stinks that that's a thing. Um, but other than that, Kelly definitely has a better stat distribution here. And just overall looks tremendously more threatening than Sukyun from the get-go. But much like Sukyun, the only issue I would say Kelly has is that its move pool isn't as varied. So it's whether it's more varied than Sukhjun or not, and well, let's just find that out. So when it comes to Keldeo's move pool, the thing that stands out when it comes to level up is that it gets a lot of really, really good physical attacks. So much so that I basically would just wish Polarath got some of these. First and foremost, Aqua Jet in priority, always helpful. And then we have Sacred Sword, and we have Close Combat, and Sword Stance. So yeah, it stands out, it really does. You do get one special move, and that is actually Hydro Pump, but that's about it. That's the only thing you learn naturally by level up. Now when it comes to TM, we have Calm Mind, as stated before, we also have Roar, much like Sukyun, this could face, but this is a Pokemon that absolutely needs Calm Mind. You just keep on boosting, because you will definitely do the damage. Uh, then we have Reflect, which is a fair thing, I think, and then Aerial Ace, and we have Focus Blast, if you don't want to settle for another special move that we're going to debate really soon. We have Stone Edge here, we have Exister, Poison Jab, we just keep on mentioning moves that are physical. We also have Skull, that should be mentioned, and of course Surf, though Hydro Pump will and should be your most common move of anything. And then we have the move we're actually going to talk about that is really, really useful and definitely defined uh, Keldeo, and that is Secret Sword, which works much like Psy Shock, actually. You're actually hitting the physical move pool or defenses with a special move. It is roughly the same strength as Aura Sphere, so it isn't as, I would say, nuking as a Focus Blast is, though 100% is accurate, is... It's something you kind of want also, so it's still a very, very effective move, but it stands out, if anything, that it isn't as close as powerful. Um, then we come afterwards, of course, the tutor moves. There really aren't too many things worth mentioning here. We should, of course, talk about the low kick, which is fair to get with superpower, which should never be used over close combat anyway. And we have Icy Wind, yes. This is one of the few water types that doesn't get Ice Beam. So Ice Wind is your next best thing, and it really isn't that good. It is even weaker than Hidden Power, so you use Ice Wind if you want the merits of the lower your opposing Pokemon speed. But besides that, there are very, very few reasons to use Ice Wind's Hidden Power, or over Hidden Power Ice if you want to have an Ice move. Uh, besides that, the other moves really aren't that helpful. And when it comes to transfer moves, the same thing here. We have Rock Smash, Secrets, Power, Cut, and Strength. There is not a lot of things here that really help out Keldeo. Now, talking about Keldeo itself, the stab combination it gets is fair enough. Um, Hydro Pump or Skull to get the lives of Secret Sword are pretty much all you need. There are very few switch ins to that. We're looking at Toxapex, for example, which probably be the, the key Pokemon to switch into that. So, I guess a hidden power ground or something like that could be we worked in with to get the lives of Calm Mind. But yeah, it does put Keldeo on a spot. Offensively, if you can't switch in this, this stab combination, which, well, given, 
aren't that many things that actually do that. Um, but the few that do really are, well, nerfing Keljus significantly. It's a very, very, very powerful threat. And with a call mine or two behind it, it's very, if not impossible, to switch into without sacking something because you need to be often to outspeed it. And I think it's bulky enough to set up very, very properly. And it is definitely one of the better, if not the best, of the Musketeer Quartet. Uh, it's definitely on par with Terrakia when it comes to viability. I myself prefer Kelio as it is just one of those really, really, really hard hitting special attackers. And being a water fighting type combination is offensively very, very hard to switch into. It is just that the threats have gotten better, I would say, in Generation 7. And it can't do what it did so well in Generation 5 because there basically was no switch in stand besides Tentacruel. And really consider Tentacruel's frailness in its physical apartment, it really wasn't a switch in any way. Um, however, we also have the physical pool where Kelios excels in. It's very unfortunate that 72 attack is what it gets. I definitely would change that for a 90 attack or something like that, like Verizion, mainly because. Yeah, I do believe it learns enough to pull that off. A C bounce, for example, would have been tremendous here. And there is a lot of things it can do right, but it isn't able to. Sword Stance really are making it maybe as strong as Conkelder. And that is not necessarily that powerful. It, or it is powerful, but being about plus two, Jam yeah, forces set up and not have the emulate power really, really are forcing it to be a specially based Pokemon. And while it does that very, very well, it's just unfortunate and it feels like a middle finger to you knowing that Kelio could be very, very interesting on the physical side also. So what this matchup basically boils down to is which one of these two actually are the better setup sweeper because really considered their combined bulk and you know the typing themselves, um, they have their merits. Kelio has more assistances, Sukun is more bulky or unable to survive our matchup, so it comes down to which one can do most damage once things start going. And yeah, I mean, yeah, Kelio absolutely only need one call mine to be able to hit something, but for me, and I think this is gonna be a loaded thing, Sukun is just that much more smarter distributed. I prefer being bulkier when I'm going to set up, and I even prefer having less issues when it comes to weaknesses if I'm going to be forced to set up, and Sukun resolves that just right. I think. Uh, Kelio has a lot of things going for that makes it very, very well, well equipped to be an offensive Pokemon. But it's just that's the thing. There are matchups that negates its effectiveness and it isn't speedy enough necessarily to deal with all of its issues head on. And not having access to the likes of Ice Beam, for example, really is damaging this Pokemon quite a lot. And of course, not being able to go physically active. Sukun can do that if it's forced to, but it just, it's better supported for its team with Tailwind in mind. Um, it's a lot more pressure heavy Pokemon, its ability is a lot more effective in the long run, and being able to run, rest, sleep, talk, or substitute, call mind, all these things, and even curse, makes it a lot more harder for teams to be dealing with. If you don't have a dedicated switch in to deal with a setup Sukun, you are very likely to lose, not because it will outmaneuver you, by its offensive proudness, while it has an offensive proudness, it is not a high offensive proudness, even more so now that Burn is, well, not effective anymore. But it will win because it will make sure that you have not enough PP to actually force it out properly. And that's a power very few Pokemon has, and Sukun has to find it since the generation it was introduced. Generation 3 is where people started to have nightmares about this. And those very same nightmares are still active, but for different generations to experience. It really is a powerhouse on a Pokemon, and there are very few Pokemon that deals with this head-on. Sukun is just a very, very powerful threat, defined by a move pool and set that has been effective as the day it started to come. Keldeo has the same aspect, it's the same move pool as it always has been but it's gotten weaker by generation to generation, and now we are in a generation where Toxipex are just eating that up, and Bulu even eats that up now, because Ice Wind is not only... Well, Ice Wind is not an effective hit necessarily on it. While it does do super effective damage, I wouldn't say that it actually stings on it, and the Skull Nerf really just enforces that. Keldeo is, all things considered, more frail than Sukun, and are more unlikely to set up due to more weaknesses. And that very same frailness is because it's speedy, and the speed isn't as good as it once was. So Kelly just 
It's still one of the best setup sweepers in the tiers and in Pokemon format ever, and I really like Kelly. If you don't have anything for it, it will ruin you, but I believe Sukun are more likely to ruin you than Kelly are, even though Kelly will do it quicker, faster, and more assassinated. But yeah, for my money, Sukun is a superb Pokemon still here, and it is the reason it wins, because it is just working most of the time while Kelly will work some of the time. So with that said guys, what do you guys think about this matchup? I know I have a lot of, well, Keldeo fans that are following me, and you know, I can see both sides of the argument. As I said, it's Sukun for me, more effective more often. So, really hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and of course, join us next week for this matchup.